Hi, and welcome to Dramatic Knits. My name is Steve, also known as Dramatic Knits, and today is Saturday, March 20th, 2021. This is episode 372. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back one more week. And if you're new, I hope you enjoy this episode and you'll come back in the future as well as check out past episodes available on YouTube and, of course, DramaticKnits.com. I hope you all have had a fabulous past three weeks, and um, it has been pretty low-key, but um, still somewhat eventful around here. Um, in fact, I had a finished object last weekend, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough content, so I pushed it off uh, recording for one more week, and here we are. In fact, I have very close to another finished object, but it needs some finishing work, so um, you won't even see that today, but I will show it to you next time I record. So, that being said, you know there's going to be an episode coming up in the next week or two. So, the past three weeks for me has been a lot of just going to the store slash studio, working, administrative work, helping out customers, answering emails, and of course, dyeing yarn. And last weekend, we... Uh, traveled to Zionsville, Indiana for a trunk show at Village Yarn Company. Um, we do a trunk show there about every six months or so. We were there last March right when COVID started, like when everything started to shut down. Because um, I remember we went to dinner after setting up and there was literally no one in the restaurant except for two workers. Um... And then, you know, everything shut down. We did go back there at the beginning of November once things started to calm down quite a bit. Uh, of course, things ramped up over the holidays and the winter months and um, things are calming back down. And of course, vaccines um, are rolling out. So we decided that um, with the precautions that were in place, we would travel out there. And we had a lovely time. There was a lot of wonderful people who stopped by. If you were one of them, thank you so much for um, coming out to the shop. And if you purchased, thank you so much for supporting two small businesses while you were there. Um, and it's a super quick trip. In fact, we don't even have to get a hotel. We leave it like 5.30 in the morning here because it's a time change for us, but it's only about a two and a half hour drive. So now that everything is on wheels in terms of our setup, we can set up in like 30 to 45 minutes and um, teardown is just as quick, if not quicker. So um, we're, we were home before eight o'clock at night. So um, yeah, other than that, it's been just managing a lot of new product coming into the store. Um, we had two big needle shipments come in. I got through one of them today. I started on the Chowgu Red Lace needles that we got in today, um, but I didn't get through very many of them. And uh, yeah, that's really it. Um, nothing really else exciting. So let's just get to the knitting, shall we? I have one finished object to show you. I finished the Zick Zack Scarf, and this is by Christy Cam. I knit using Queensland Collection Uluru Rainbow in Cape Hillsboro and Wartaw Bouquet colorways. Knit on a size 3 US, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle. And I've got a bag of goodies here, and I forgot that it's in it. So I really enjoy this. It, uh, knitting in general is taking me way too long as of late, but um, here it is. So it's a simple two, uh, well, actually it's a one row repeat. And um, you're just alternating two skeins of yarn throughout. So these were technically, I think, sport weight skeins, hence why I went up to a size three. Um, the scarf is not obscenely long. But it will do the job. And of course, if you wear it differently, you can get a little bit more length out of it. Something like that. But it is very soft. It is getting a fuzz factor, especially after I blocked it. It bloomed and fuzzed up with this yarn. Um, so enjoying that. Um, if you're wondering what I'm wearing today, this is the So Basic sweater uh, designed by Maxim Sear. Um, and I used 
Leading Men Fiber Art Soliloquy in the Don't Fear the Reaper colorway, and I finished it. I don't, I showed it, um, like holding it up, but it was too warm when I finished it to wear it. Um, I've been wearing this a couple times now this winter. I pretty much live in t-shirts, so I really don't have a reason to dress up, but on Saturdays, I usually don't dye yarn, and I will wear a sweater because I'm more available to help customers and I take a little time to knit if I can and do a lot more administrative work and packing orders than um, dyeing yarn. So, um, but yeah, really happy with the scarf. I have no idea who this is gonna go to. In fact, I may put it up on the website and the shop to see if anybody wants a nice hand knit gift to give or receive. So, yeah. So that's that. Um, just took a while, but it was super mindless. It would have been great travel knitting, but again, we weren't traveling. And hence why I never realized how much knitting and crafting time I got in between road trips, shows, and hotel time. There's a lot of downtime for me to knit. So um, because we're not traveling, I'm working a lot more and um, just not getting the downtime that I'm used to. So there's that. Alrighty, so that's what I finished knit-wise. Let's go into what's performing and what I've been working on the past three weeks. Um, first up, let's talk about my crochet scrap blanket. I am crocheting the Colorful Linen Stitch Blanket by Helena Cat, and I am using two strands of fingering weight held together to give me about a DK weight. And I am marling them and I'm switching colors every row, but I'm holding each color for two rows. So um, not much love on this, unfortunately. Yeah, really not much love. You can see here is where I was three weeks ago. Um, I really have not been doing much of side crafting as of late, so. There's the bottom. And there's the top, a lot of neutrals towards the top. So hopefully this weekend, but we do, I'm recording on Saturday night rather than tomorrow on Sunday because we actually have to go out and run some errands tomorrow. And usually I don't leave the house on Sunday. I usually don't shower on Sunday. It's my lazy day, I take a nap. And tomorrow we have to go to the AT&T store and get a new phone for the business. Um, we have a business line, but it's actually an app that I use on my phone that comes through a second number in a different ringtone. However, we need an actual phone that can stay at the store so then when I'm not there or Andy's not there, um, when the f my phone is not physically in the store that um, our manager, my sister Amanda, can be able to answer the phone when we're not actually there. So I don't want to be able to, I don't want to have to answer the business phone when I'm on the road or not there or on vacation or things like that. So we're going to go add a line to our phone plan and transfer the number over. We also need to buy a new washer and dryer, mainly a dryer um, because it is, ours has been screechingly loud for like the past two months and I am done. I've had it. My Sundays, because the washer and dryer is right behind this wall, and I get to just listen to it all day um, while we're doing laundry. So I'm like, we're done. We're getting a washer and dryer. Um, and uh, we might go look at some shorts um, for an upcoming trip that Andy and I are going on. Um, we made the decision to go on vacation here towards the end of the COVID pandemic because one, um, the requirements for travel are so strict that we have to get tested within 72 hours of flying and we have to be tested again before we fly back. And um, there are so many precautions where we're going. We're, we're going to Cancun again. Um, we were dying to go last year and COVID happened. So um, we decided um, at the end of April into the beginning of May, we are going to be um, going to LeBlanc, which is a amazingly beautiful and so well-run resort in Cancun. It is a little bit pricey, but if you want to treat yourself to an amazingly all-inclusive, adults only, it is the number one rated resort in Cancun. Um, we went three and a half years ago and it was 
one of the best experiences of my life. And um, we tried another resort shortly thereafter and it did not compare. It was lovely, the second resort, but it did not compare to LeBlanc. So we are going back to LeBlanc, but um, they actually do in-house COVID testing before you leave so that you have the required documentation to fly back. Um, and I'm hoping to get a vaccine before then, but I don't know because the vaccines are snatched up here before the blink of an eye. Um, because there's so few down here in rural uh, Illinois. So, um, yeah, and there's just so many safety precautions at the actual resort. And honestly, something to think about too, we didn't realize, but we actually had heard about it on NPR, is that everyone is dying to go somewhere and to get out and see people. And when we are, you know, when everybody, all the travel restrictions are gone and masks are gone, um, the price of vacations and flights and things are going to be outrageously inflated for the first couple to six months. And every nobody's going to want to wait another six months. So I was like, why not take a better deal now when we're on the end of it? And we know we have to be um, negative to fly and we have to be negative to fly back. And the extra, the thing that put us over the top on going is that if for some reason, they've not had anybody get it, I don't believe, while at the resort, but if for some reason you were to become positive at the retreat, they will um, allow you to quarantine for 14 days for free there. So granted, I'm sure you can't go around the resort, you're probably quarantined to your room, but hey, I will take my uh, oceanfront room for 14 days and be quarantined and have my room service and all that, so... Anyway, we are going on vacation. It is much needed. So um, we need to make sure that people who call the shop while the shop is open, which it will be while we're on vacation, that they can get through and I don't have to answer the phone in Mexico. So, all right, um, let's move on to knitting. Um, the Happenings Wrap by Laura Tabbitt. I don't have that to show you. I finished knitting on it today, bound off. All the ends are woven in. Most of them were woven in while I knit. And I need to block that next week and then sew on the 25 buttons that go adorn it. So all that finishing work needs to happen. So I will show that to you. That'll be the next finished object that you will um, see from me, but it is not quite done to be shown yet. Next up is my Fade Into Advent. This is by Lisa K. Ross. Um, and I'm using a Suburban Stitcher 2020 Advent Collection, the neutral colorway. She had um, two different selections. And um, I am knitting this on a size 6 US, which is a four millimeter needle. And I've reached over the halfway point. In fact, I'm completely done with four of the 24 colorways. So I am a sixth of the way completely done, a sixth of the way through the colors. But I finished the first half. So you use the first three colors to, let me see how this goes. Holding it upside down. Use the first three colors to make a central diamond, which is right there. And then you work your way out over here. And then you end up doing two shorter triangles on the end. And that will get blocked to open up. You can see I was right there, so I had to finish this area and then one corner and another corner, look how beautiful this gradient is for this fade that Diane of Suburban Stitcher put together. So all the colors are released except 20, color 25 I did not need to use in this pattern. So I have it going in my scrap blanket and I have started my way out this way. So I just finished color four this afternoon and I will be joining in color six, color five is in there as well. Um, but I'll be fading five and six together here next. So um, that's what I'll be working on this evening if Andy and I watch some TV together, but I might do some side crafting because I did start a new project. Ooh, I need to take this out. This is not part of my new items from the shop, but um, we've been using some of our handmade soaps that we um, stock in the shop. And these are from Cannard Labs based out of Oregon. And this is the succulent scent, which is cactus flower, guave, and jade. So grabbed one of those to try the that 
sent out. And um, last but not least is my Beachcomber socks. These are being knit out of Fiber Nymph Dye Works Bounce in the Beachcomber colorway. And Elidiumin Fiber Arts Mini Skein in Poseidon. And I put in the Afterthought heel on the first sock. I'm knitting these on a size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needle. And here it is. Right there, I don't know if you can see, it's very hard to see. Right there is my blue which is my afterthought heel. So all of that is my leg. And then I'm going down the foot now as we go. So enjoying that. These are gonna be for me. And that's what I've been working on. So um, let's move into in rehearsal. What am I going to be casting on? So. Since I finished the Happenings Wrap, which is a sample for Leading Men, um, I try to keep something out of our yarn on the needles at all times. I'm going to be casting on the um, Tartan Toque and Tube by Tracy Miller um, of Grocery Girls fame. And I'm going to be using um, two skeins of DK Weight. One is going to be a brand new color for April. And another one is Spiced Apple Cider. And it is a mosaic knit cowl and hat. And with one of the colors, the new color that's going to be coming out in April, you hold a mohair strand with it. So I'm going to be doing that now that we carry mohair. I need to have a mohair sample. So I'll be casting that on. I'll be winding the yarn next week and putting that in a project bag to cast on. Behind the scenes, my spinning, I also finished some hand spun. So I spun this one pretty quickly. It is thick for me, which is pretty good. It is an Aran weight two ply. And it is also in this bag. And this is some Three Waters Farm Polworth in the Clear Light Dawning colorway. And I got 184 yards of an Aran weight. And it is two ply, four ounces. And there you go. So it's got some oranges, some golds, yellows, blues, and then this like uh, dark bluey brown almost. So 184 yards of about an errand weight. And that will be going up in the shop next week. It's been done all this week, but I've been waiting to podcast to show it off and then I will get it listed in the shop. And anyone who's interested can have that. Um, so next up on my wheel, I have not started anything new on my wheel, but I did pick my next fiber using my random number generator on my stash. And I picked for me some fiber optic yarns, 80% merino, 20% silk in the blackbird gradient. Let's see if I can get it. There you go. So it's like this really dark teal into a forest green and to black. So I am notorious for doing a two ply fractal, but not with gradients. I do spin them from the braid and then I chain ply them in order to keep the colors together and preserve the, the gradient. So um, I will be spinning it that way for that. All right, let's move on. In the scene shop, what have I been working on in terms of other crafts? Again, not a whole lot this week, but I have put in a little bit here and there. So. I am dropping needles like it is going out of style and I really hate to pull away from you like that, especially because the lighting changes, but I've got three needles on here and I don't want them falling off. So this is my Heaven and Earth Designs um, called One for Sorrow, uh, uh, artwork by Stephanie Law. This is on 25 count easy grid fabric. I am stitching this two over one half stitch. And this is going to be a magpie on a, and then a big piece of stone underneath it. Um, and slowly but surely making progress on that. And then I was watching some floss tube and I had purchased a pattern from this company before and I've been trying to figure out the right fabrics and colors because they don't really give you colors and you have options and... So I purchased this pattern a while ago and then I saw this new, it's not a mystery stitch along because you get the whole 
picture of the pattern, which I'll show you here in a minute, but you get one piece every month for 12 months. Of course, I buy it in mid-March, so I'm already three months behind. And of course, as I'm starting to stitch this, I realize there's no way I could finish this if I worked on it every night, one of them in a month, one of the, so it's gonna be a long-term project. But the company is Modern Folk Embroidery, and this is a male-generated company, a male-owned company. And what he does is makes folk embroidery pieces with a modern twist. So he takes a lot of motifs and things from folk embroidery and then brings them and combines them into his own patterns. So the um, 2021 stitch along is called um, The Fruit of Plenty. And the first three pieces have been released, but here is the whole piece. It is going to be fairly large and um, I am stitching mine in very similar colors, I went through, because um, he doesn't give you actual color recommendations, he does fabric, um, but I went through Instagram and followed the hashtag and found somebody's um, that I thought represented this well, and I picked their colors. So the top portion has been released. This was January, February, and March. I'm starting up here. You'll see that here in just a second. Um, but I am stitching mine on 32 count. Um, linen, boy, it's 32 count small. I don't know how people do 40 or whatnot, but I'm just like, I gotta turn towards the light and with my light behind me so I could see the stitches and um, I should have just done 16 count and been happy. But I got my first um, piece of hand dyed fabric. All the floss and fabric came from one, two, three stitch. I'm stitching this in a hoop. Um, I'm trying to find the sticker where it says what this is. This is a 32 count Tyco Belfast linen. It is picture this plus, and this is a 26 by 35 piece. So you can see this is going to be a large piece. Now there's more fabric than I need, but the general rule of thumb is you wanna take the size of the piece as estimated by the designer, or you can figure out by your stitch count, you know, there's 32 stitches or 32 holes in the fabric for every inch. So you want to take your piece as a whole and then add six inches to both the width and the height because that will give you three inches on either side and top and bottom which is what is recommended for framing. So I always err on the side of caution and I just six inches or more. That way I know I'm good because I if I'm going to spend this much time on cross stitch, they're not going to just sit around like all the cross stitchers that I watch when that's their main hobby and they have all this. I understand you can't frame everything, but I don't do a whole lot of cross stitching. So when I finish something, it's going to be framed and it is going to be hung and it is going to be a piece of art. So, and it will deserve the price of framing because of all that. So um, this says it is, 382 um, stitches high by 251 wide. Um, so on a 32 count linen stitching two over two, it's gonna be 24 inches high by 15 and 5 eighths wide. So there are a total of approximately 4,000 or 47,396 crosses in this piece. Again, here is what it looks like. I just really liked it. It is, you know, a sampler-ish. It's an embroidery. I don't know if you'd call it Quaker or not. Uh, I'm not that familiar. But um, I didn't think there was anything too feminine about it. So I've started... <laughs> I've got 300, 300 blocks, or I've got 30 stitches wide and 10 down completed. Um, so there you go. You can see my one wonky stitch I got off at one point. I just, it's going though, it's going. 
So I am using, by the way, colors something something and something something. In case you want to know. I think it takes it takes 12 skeins of one color and 13 of another. Um, my dark color is 3750 and my light color is 931. Oh my goodness, camera. go. So, got all that floss in there. More blue too, right? I'm doing, I was like, I was trying to go with a different color scheme, but I just, blue was what drew me into this. And it's going to look really good on my blue walls down here um, when I get it done. So that's what I'm working on. So this is what I'm going to spend a good deal of my night doing because, well, I want to. I am. But yeah, look at this piece. Anyway, all right, last but not least, let me show you my fox latch hook. A little bit done on this. You can see more of the fox's tail. This is a moonlit fox latch hook kit that I got from Hirschner's. It's rounding up there. You can see the tail there. This will be a decent sized piece as well. And that's just going. A little bit here, a little bit there. All right, let's move right along into In the Spotlight. What am I watching and reading? No reading. Spoiler. Um, so we've watched a lot of shows. We've finished some stuff. I'm only going to talk about the stuff that we finished. TV-wise, we finished WandaVision, which is through Disney+, Plus, which in fact... We were convinced by my sister and one of our employees to create, which my sister didn't even watch it, my, one of my employees did with her family, to create a WandaVision gradient set, which we did, and I totally forgot to pack it, so that is up in the shop. Um, but it's got six mini skeins, and the middle two are black and white, like the beginning of the show, and then there are two skeins to mimic Wanda and two skeins to mimic Vision and... Um, I think it actually really came out well. They did a really good job. They they created it. I mean, I dyed it, but they um, they picked the colors. They picked the promo photos and everything for it. So um, definitely enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. It is a little weird to get into, but by episode three, you'll be hooked. Um, so speaking of which, I said I wasn't going to say it, but we did watch the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier last night. Seems all right. So we'll see. Um, next up, we finished Interior Design Masters, and I was sorely disappointed. Um, honestly, the person that won, I was not rooting for from the beginning. I didn't think they had anywhere near the great taste that the one final factor judged did. And honestly, I don't know if I'll watch another season if they do another one, because I'm like, I just don't understand. <laughs> um, I finished Orphan Black the last season, season five, so I'm done watching Orphan Black. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Of course, like anything, the seasons got worse as they went on. The story, there's huge loopholes, characters that were just written off the show and never explained. Um, but it was a fun ride. Um, and I highly recommend it if you're interested in kind of a um, sci-fi crime, um, dealing with cloning and um, crime syndicate and whatnot. Um, we just finished last night Fargo season two. This was from many years ago. It's set in 1979 and it is a prequel to the season one. Um, it was good. I liked it better than season one, except for the ending. There were so many unanswered questions and I have no idea why they introduced some big plot elements that were never resolved or really addressed. Um, so... Um, Movie-wise, we watched His House on Netflix. This is a um, scary ghost story movie dealing with um, two refugees. I want to say it's Sudan. Um, that are refugees in London, and they get put into public housing, but um, they lost their daughter on the 
boat ride over. Their boat capsized and they were with a bunch of others. Um, and so they um, were essentially given a better home than they most others do because they had a daughter and, and lost them and or lost her. And in this house, um, the essentially the ghosts of their past have come to haunt them and dealing with um, their beliefs and their... Um, rituals, I guess, uh, ritualistic beliefs on um, the ghosts from the past that come to haunt them. And so it, it was it was pretty good. Um, one of the the main women in it is actually the sister in Lovecraft Country, which is really good. And I'm one episode away from finishing that. Um, so I thought it was pretty well done and something a little bit different. Um, we also, on the recommendation of my sister, watched Earthquake Bird. This is on Netflix as well. This is set in the 1980s in um, Tokyo, I believe. Um, and it deals with um, expats that are living in Tokyo trying to find their way and establish themselves. And um, there is a missing girl who's played by Elvis's granddaughter. I did not know that. Um, and they're trying to figure out what happened to her. And so you kind of get the backstory about this love triangle between this main woman, um, this Japanese man, and this um, American woman. And uh, things come to light, and it's kind of a whodunit um, love triangle kind of story. Um, I thought it was pretty good, so I would give it about four stars. I would say check it out if you're looking for something new to watch. And that's it for what uh, what I've been watching and reading. Let's talk stash enhancement. At our trunk show last weekend, I finally pulled the trigger, and I bought some yarn from Katie at Village Yarn Company. I've always been pretty restrained there, and um, I came across this yarn and then they she had the yarn booklet for it and I came across this pattern and I was like you know what that looks like a super comfy pattern to wear around the house so I'm gonna buy the yarn and then I came home and purchased the um, pattern because I didn't need the whole booklet I just needed the one pattern and of course my printer was running out of ink the business printer of course and so um, I changed the ink today but this is the pattern it is called Bellaterre it is by Amy Christophers and it is through Barocco it is basically a fisherman's rib cardigan. Um, and I was like, you know what? It looks super comfy. So um, I'm gonna be knitting this using eight balls of Barocco Mochi. Sorry, my light is definitely flashing out. And it's this gray yarn with subtle tweeds of color in it. And Barocco Mochi is 30% baby alpaca, 35% nylon, 26% wool, and 2% other fiber. It is an Aran weight, I believe. It is 191 yards to 50 grams. Well, that doesn't seem like an Aran weight. But all right. And this is color 3225, by the way. This is a hand wash only yarn. Try to see what the pattern says. Of course, it doesn't say the yarn weight because they want you to use the, the yarn there. So, yep. All right. Let me just check that. I'm interested now. I've got Ravelry up. So, sorry, my lighting keep changing. I don't know why my phone auto focuses like that. It's kind of annoying. See how I'm all white? I'm like blown out. Okay, so it says Barocco Mochi is an Aaron weight. That's interesting. Must be the bloom on it. Okay, so that is what I purchased at Village Yarn Company. 
Let's talk about our giveaway for this week. I've got two skeins of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes that I'm going to be giving away. One is in the color Cherry Blossom, which I think has been discontinued, but it is very close to Dragon Fruit. So I posted a picture of Dragon Fruit on um, the giveaway thread because I couldn't find this anymore because um, it even has the older label. Um, but then and a skein of red, I thought, you know, you can't really do color work with these because they're too close together, but you can make some hats for charity or whatnot. These are 50 grams, 100% Peruvian Highland wool, 110 yards, and it's a worst to wait. So two skeins of this are up for grabs. You must be a member of the Ravelry group and post your answer to this episode's prompt in the appropriate thread. The prompt is, what was the best compliment you re have ever, excuse me, received? Let's try that again. What is the best compliment that you've ever received? And I thought these yarns were fitting because they kind of like are a blush color. Like, you know, some people blush when they get a compliment, no matter what the compliment is. So these two skeins are up for giveaway next time. And that moves us right along into a round of applause. Let's give away last episode's giveaway skein, which was a skein of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Sock in the Sea Glass colorway, which looks like this. And the prompt was, what's something new you learned in the past week? And random number generator selected number 18, which is LS Pop 09. That is Laura from California. So congratulations, Laura, you've won the skein. Laura responded, I'm in grad school, so I'm learning a lot about conducting quality improvement projects. This week was testing reliability and implementation. That just makes my head hurt saying it. So, applause to you. That's my silent applause. <laughs> so I don't actually blow out people's ears. But congratulations, Laura. I applaud you for doing all that because, oh, that just makes my head hurt. I'm so out of like the corporate administrative world anymore. I'm just like, I do my own thing. I run at my own pace and I'm so lucky to be able to do that. But anyway, Laura, please email me Dramatic Knits on Ravelry with your first and last name, mailing address and email address so I can send you tracking and I'll get this out in the mail to you as soon as I can. All right, um, I did wanna give a shout out. It was supposed to happen last episode and I completely forgot So I got an email from a lovely young lady, Katie, who um, was interested in doing a Zoom call with me, but unfortunately I'm just not doing Zoom anything, virtual anything. I've been, we've been requested a lot through the business to do virtual events or, you know, Zoom in for um, knitting guild meetings or for trunk shows and stuff. And I'm just like, I sit in front of my camera, but knowing that the, there are live people on the other side of the camera freaks me out. I can do it when I don't think, you know, I put it out there after the fact, but knowing that at that moment, then I get all flustered and red in the face. And so Katie, thank you for inviting me. But however, I did say I would give a shout out to Katie and her group. Um, Katie is part of the Ross Shepherd knitting team, and I asked for them to um, give me a little shout out or give me a little blurb about them. They are a small club based in Ross Shepherd High School. I don't know where that's at, but um, they meet during their lunches and hang out and knit. And they've um, been teaching more of their group members to knit and crochet um, because in the future they're hoping to donate items to um, people living in homelessness and people in need of scarves or hats because their winters get extremely cold there. So um, thank you so much for what you all are doing, Katie and team. And I know that they said they enjoy watching podcasts at lunch while they are knitting, and a lot of times they will tune into Dramatic Knits. So hi, you all. Welcome, and thank you so much for enjoying the Dramatic Knits podcast, and I hope you do wonderful things with your knitting charity and otherwise. Okay, let's move into center stage, all things Leading Men Fiber Arts. First up, let's talk about our March 2021 colorway of the month. It is past pre-orders. However, there are still several different bases that are dyed up and available in the shop. And this month's new colorway was called Kind of a Big Dill, which is this. It is a subtly shaded green. It is a bright green, but there are varying shades in it, and there are a few little speckles and things as well. And this one is on our show stealer, which is our merino cashmere nylon base. 
And this is what it looks like knit up flat on worsted. So kind of a big deal was our new colorway for March. And um, if you just search with the little magnifying glass up at the top of our website, type in kind of a big deal, it will list all the bases that we have currently available. So that was the new colorway. We have our new one coming out in April. I've been dyeing it this week so that it is ready. Um, we're trying to stay ahead of schedule because we've actually been doing well with that. So I've been dyeing it this week. I'm not gonna tell you what the name of it is because then you will get an idea of the color and I'm not gonna do that. Sorry. Um, but let's uh, talk about some new items in the shop. Um, tons of new items. Um, if you go to the shop, you can search anything by um, newest. You can search it by popularity, price. You can search by alphabetical order. You can also search by price range. Um, There's so many things you can do on the website. It's not even funny until it acts up like it did last week. And all my categories doc got discombobulated. There it is. Of course, it's at the bottom of the bag. The first thing I wanted to show you were these really cool um, recycled fire hose bracelets. Um, this is from Three, Dister Three Sisters Designs, um, and they are based out of Georgia, I want to say. Uh, but they take these um, old recycled fire hoses, and they make them into bracelets and they hand stamp them with words of encouragement. So there's brave, happy, courage, um, hope, and dream, I think. There's um, five different ones, but they come with a double snap. So you can make it large, medium, small. I mean, if your wrist is that small, but. Um, and I'm gonna take off here. This is my Birdie Parker Designs cuff that I have. We do have her double wrap bracelets also in our, um, available online. But I just thought these were cool for kind of a hip rustic look. These can also be used as shawl cuffs. If I can get the dang snap to line up. There we go. So there's it on me. This one says courage. And you can see the double snaps there. And I have decent sized wrists. If you want it not so fitting, you just snap it at a bigger size and it's gonna jingle a little more. But yeah. So we have um, several of those available. I think we still have all of the prints available. Some of them have sold, but you can check those out. I love that they're recycled. I love that it's a woman-owned company as well. And they're making, and it's a family company. So those are the recycled fire hose bracelets. Next up, we just stocked today. What I was working on was a big restock of uh, Luka, Likey. That's how people pronounce it. But Luka, I believe, is the pronunciation, something along those lines. Um, but what I got to show you, we have a bunch of fixed circulars in 16, 24, and 32s. We should be stocked on most everything unless it's back ordered. We also got five interchangeable sets. I've got two in the normal driftwood, um, and then I've got the umber, which is like a golden yellow, and then um, grove, which is their bamboo, and um, it's got like a jute case with a green lining. Oh, I did not want to do that. I was trying to open these up for you. There we go. Dang it. So these come with I yeah, like zhuzh it because I read the tag. Um, these come with 12 pairs of needles, size 4 to 17 US, um, plus 5 cords, 2 24 inch, 2 32 inch, and a 40 inch plus two connectors, four keys and eight stoppers. It's got a worldwide replacement warranty. So if anything ever happens, you can go to the Likey um, website and fill out a return form and they will send you a replacement. Um, yeah. So um, the ones we have for the driftwood are in the gray fabric. And 
if you open them up, you have your silicone bag, but you have all your needles. And then um, there is a Velcro tearaway for the needles. You also have all your accoutrement inside, stoppers, and all that jazz in there. Look at that. So, and this is, I really like these cases. This is a case I would want to carry around. I love the Knitter's Pride um, Zings. Uh, the Melodies of Life is what I have. And I, in fact, I bought a set for the store and of course it came in damaged. So I had to return it and I have a credit. I'm still debating about bringing some of those in, but I do not enjoy it. They don't actually give you a case. They give you a box. That's kind of useless. So this is the um, Likey needles. Again, I've got two in the driftwood, one umber, one grove, and I've got the indigo, but it, on back order. So those are the blue ones. Um, both the umber and the driftwood, um, you're getting essentially a full set. These aren't just smalls and then larges. You're getting a full set. These are 125, and then the um, grove is 110. So they're a little bit cheaper. All right, next up, I've been bringing in a lot of bags and tote bags and stuff. They're a big seller in the shop for people coming in off the street. Um, I've got here a really cool felt tote bag. Felt's kind of all the rage with me. I love felt. Um, so these are $20. It's a nice big felt tote bag to put, you know, your project bags in and lug around. There's no ante to it. You can see the flat bottom there, how wide it is. Um, there's no pockets or anything like that. Um, but I think it would be just a really cool on the go, take all your project bags when you're going someplace as we're starting to travel again, hopefully, maybe. So I think I've got three of these in stock right now. And a lot of my um, non-knitting things that I bring in will come and may not come back. Not that I'm saying that I hate when people are like, get it now before it's gone. Okay, don't pressure me into buying stuff. But I just, fair warning, like I probably won't restock those. I'll bring something new in because I have to be, you know, cognizant of rotating stock and bringing new things in for returning customers and stuff for that, like that. We also got um, some new books and um, books, periodicals. Um, I'm now carrying by hand um, from by hand cereal. Um, I pre-ordered this and then I went back and I bought, this is a special edition. I bought their last two and then I pre-ordered the, the newest one. So lookbook 13 and 14 are on the website. This is on the website, and Lookbook 15, 15 I have on pre-order. Um, there's only three copies of each. Um, and this is just a beautiful, I like this. It's got a couple knitting patterns in it, but it has so much more than that. If you like creating and making, which is what I want, what I, our space is, it's a maker's space. Um, this is a really great periodical, just to have it on your coffee table and things like that. Um, so let me see if it has a little write-up about this or not. Um, it does not have the little write-up in here on the back, but I can tell you what things are included. So um, there's aromatic wax fire starters. That's a project. Knitting, there's the tree bark cardigan. Um, there's maple syrup season. That's a featured article. There's a recipe for maple syrup candy. There's um, sewings included in here, the plaid hooded blanket shawl. There's a feature on how to season a cast iron pan, which Andy would enjoy because he got a cast iron pan for um, Christmas and he's been religiously seasoning it when he uses it. Um, there's a knitting pattern for Champlain. Or, um, there's a feature on winter's West best wool blankets. There's a winter cabin cross stitch in here, which was really cute. There's the mountain pine pullover. That's a knitting pattern. Um, flannel, a fuzzy bit of history. That's a featured article. A recipe for open flame cooking beef stew. Um, the snowdrifts hat 
and that's knitting and quilting the flannel puff quilt. So all that's included in here. Um, these, this special edition is $30. The other, um, the regular editions are 25 that come with a bunch of different things. And this one is um, the special edition in the cabin. The other ones are focused on territories. So I think um, 13 was, or 13 or 14 was Hudson Bay. And the other one was, or the Hudson Valley and But those are available, those are under the books section, which is under accessories and tools. Also under patterns if you wanna find them there. Last but not least, let's talk about a new uh, craft kit that I brought in, uh, mainly because I've been wanting to try it, but I haven't pulled, punched the needle yet. Um, I brought in some punch needle kits. So we brought in a few punch needles and um, spools and different tips, and then I brought in a couple of kits. The kits come with the hoop, the fabric, and um, everything you need. Oh, I'm sorry. The kits come with the fabric. You need the punch needle tool and the hoop. You get everything else. You've got the, um, it's an eight inch finished size I brought here, the um, alpaca one. And you actually do print, uh, the printed side is on the back. Punch needles stitch from the back to create loops on the front. Each loop is created with a simple push-pull motion. Repeat to fill in the area with color. This contains wool yarn, printed fabric, and instructions. And those are $18 for the kit, but then of course you'd need to get the punch needle um, and the hoop. We do have hoops available as well um, in the shop. So those are some new items. Let's talk about a new sample that is um, just came in, we got quite a few, but I really fell in love with this one. It's a two, simple two skein shawl using Showstopper, and it is a crocheted shawl. So this is Amaru, and this is by Deanne Ramsey on Ravelry. And we do have the pattern available, print copies available in um, our shop. You could do this with minis, absolutely. We did two colors. This is in the colorways Moody Blue, which is the very light pale blue, and Dames at Sea. It is an asymmetrical triangle shawl. As I like put it in my mouth. But I did post a picture of this on Instagram with myself wearing this. And I like it. I love an asymmetrical shawl, what can I say? So if you're if you're a hooker, give this one a try. So we're trying to represent equally anymore um, and be inclusive of making and creating and everybody's got a story to tell and with their two hands and um, we just love the community that we've established so far and that we can't wait to grow and expand so speaking of community we do have um, knit alongs going on in the leading men fiber arts group um, wrapping up in the month of March is the Cabin Fever Knit Along. This was initially released as a mystery knit along, but all the clues have been released. The pattern has been shown. And um, then going through the month of April is the Sip Hat Knit Along. That takes only two mini skeins. And then we have started this month and going through the end of May is uh, the Kaibab Hat and Mitts. These are um, a pair of hat and mitts that use a bunch of mini skeins and um, a little bit of color work, and they are to kind of mimic a sunset or sunrise out in the Kaibab region, I believe. Mountains, I don't know. I'm not as versed in my geography. But anyway, it is designed by a local designer who is going to be one of our teachers in the studio, and I'm excited to have her, Melinda Bauer. And so um, she designed the hat, first of all, but she used a progression of mini skeins and so to get the full color effect, it took nine mini skeins. And she's like, there was leftovers. So she designed the mitts so that you could use all the mini skeins. You need one full skein, a showstopper, and nine mini skeins. Um, we just got sets dyed up. They will not come with the pattern initially. So if you're looking to join the knit along, look for sets in the shop coming this Monday. Sorry, Tuesday, because um, Mandy has to be in to list those. Um, and if you are astute, there is a coupon code 
for all of our knit alongs in each of their appropriate threads on Ravelry. And all that it requires is you to use some leading men fiber arts in your finished object and to document that on Ravelry and to finish it within the time frame of the knit along and post a picture and be a member of the leading men fiber arts group. So that's it. And there's wonderful prizes, usually patterns from the designers, as well as gift certificates to the online store. So that's pretty much it. There's no upcoming events. We do have one at the end of April, but I'm sure that I will see you before then. So until I see you again, don't forget to um, follow us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and a thumbs up, as well as you can find all the show notes at DramaticKnits.com and um, join the Dramatic Knits Ravelry group. For Leading Men Fiber Arts, we'd love if you'd join us on Instagram and follow us there, as well as Facebook. That's the best way to stay up to, new, um, up to date with everything, as well as join our newsletter, which you can do by hopping onto the website. There should be a pop-up that pops up in the first couple of seconds, and you can fill that out there. And um, yeah, you can find the shop at leadingmenfiberarts.com. And until I see you again when I record again, whenever I have a finished object, which shouldn't be too long. I hope you make something dramatic.